Uh, well, our next guest says he thinks inflationary pressures are still transitory, that these problems when it comes to supply chain issues will gradually ease. Joining us now is Kerry Craig, who's the global market strategist at JP Morgan Asset Management. So, Kerry, how do you feel that way? Is that what markets are still feeling at the moment, particularly in light of, uh, you know, this sort of confluence of crises that we're seeing from supply chain issues to energy? Well, good morning. Well, I think there's a case you have to separate the, the very high levels of inflation that we've been seeing from just higher inflation in general. And I think that in the case of inflation being transitory, these very, very high levels, for example, plus 5% in the US, are going to start to moderate as some of these issues do start to fade away. But we will be left with overall higher inflation in the economy than perhaps we're used to, or at least definitely we've seen over the last decade when central banks couldn't get inflation back above target. So there is clearly pressures for inflation in the economy, and inflation rates would probably be closer, if not above 2% in the central bank targets in the coming years. But that doesn't mean we're going to be at these sort of 5% inflation levels forever. And I think that's the difference we think about transitory inflation definitely coming off as supply chains correct as you see supply and demand come back to the energy sector and the labour market adjust in the coming months. But we still will have overall higher levels of inflation, which is something very different that we've had in the past. At the same time, we're seeing uh, the jobless numbers. We're also seeing concerns from the likes of the BOE's Andrew Bailey over inflation as well. Is stagflation, uh, and then of course we do have uh, growth forecast being cut as well. Is stagflation really something that investors need to worry about in terms of how they construct their portfolios? I think stagflation is important in thinking about the construction of your portfolio today and, and right now. And we do have this environment where you have uh, expectations for inflation rising and expectations for growth falling. But I don't think we're going to be in an environment where we see stagflation becoming entrenched, uh, that it will pass because we can see growth uh, coming back up as we look at you know the ability for companies to spend and corporate investment intentions, uh, that we see consumers and households that have um, strong uh, job potential and wage growth coming through as well as elevated savings rates. Uh, and we can see that building on growth sides, where on the other side we do see maybe some pressures easing in the shipping industry, uh, some of that uh, demand for goods easing as economies reopen and shift back to services, uh, easing those supply chain pressures, that those inflation numbers will come back down as well. So we'll see more growth and a bit less inflation, sort of uh, unwinding those stagflation fears in the coming months. And importantly, you know, if we think about the 70s, it was a supply side shock, but we also had central banks that were tightening rates back then. And, and that's not really the case now. We still have, at the margin, small amounts of tightening happening, mm. tapering and, and a few central banks raising rates, but overall still very accommodative monetary policy. But given these concerns about inflation, the question is for how long, right? I mean, we are already expecting the UK, Canada, Brazil to raise rates by the end of 2022. So if you combine that with inflationary concerns, wouldn't you have tightening liquidity much faster uh, than was expected? Well, I think that's where the markets are trying to figure out exactly what central banks mean when they're, when they're beginning this tightening path or tapering and then tightening in the case of other central banks. Uh, and it is going to be the very slow normalisation process that matters for the growth outlook, that if central banks become a bit more reactionary to these stronger growth with inflation numbers and they tighten faster, that's going to be where you start to see demand being hit. And right now, the inflation is caused by the supply side, not the demand side. Uh, and you don't want central banks to tighten mm. further. It's going to restrict demand. And so I think they'll be very cautious about the pace of hiking. But at the same time, they do want to start that normalisation process. And I think that's what's been going on right. the way at the moment. Uh, Kerry, just quickly, are you at all worried about the demand side of things? Because we have seen Goldman, for example, downgrade a U.S. growth forecast because of consumer spending. And then you have the holiday season through Golden Week in China. And really, consumer spending was pretty sluggish. So would you factor that into the markets, especially when it comes to specific sectors like retail? We are seeing uh, growth expectations come down a little bit. You know, obviously the, the forecast numbers are being revised down and consensus expectation numbers are coming down. But they're still at very decent levels and they're still thinking about a global economy that's going to expand uh, probably above potential in the next year. But just take the labour market numbers that came out in the US, for example. The labour market is clearly tightening. When you do hit full employment, that does start to restrict growth potential uh, and it does start to weigh on the numbers. And so there is a case of thinking about why growth will be lower in places like the US, 
But there's mm. also a case for thinking about why growth be much higher in other markets that are still recuperating all that lost output from COVID-19, particularly in the emerging markets, which are still to come back in a large way. So I think as right. investors, there's plenty of opportunities out there.